This is a continuation of a steam engine collection on my kitchen table, part 3, testing the Stuart S50 engines, but this time the engines are in the workshop on the workbench. This is the first of the S50s, it needs an inlet and an outlet, and generally checking over. For the exhaust outlet I'm going to use a 3 16 by 40 elbow, because this is in scale with the engine, and it will be a very easy job to fit an extension pipe to carry the exhaust away from the engine. I would just silver solder a copper pipe onto the existing nut that fits on the elbow. I've made a steam inlet adapter and here I'm applying some Loctite 542 before screwing it in place. This adapter is quarter by 40 threads per inch on the outer part and quarter by 32 threads per inch on the inner part to fit the engine. That's because generally speaking when I make up piping I would normally use quarter by 40 threads per inch union fittings, not quarter by 32 threads per inch. Is it going to work? Before I find that out, I'm going to lubricate every moving part of the engine, because the engines are very dry because they haven't been run for a long time. Lubrication is very important. It's never a good idea just to put some compressed air into an engine and hope it works. You would probably find that it would work, but it's always a good idea to oil the engine first. As well as oiling the main bearings, don't forget the eccentric, and of course the big end. And that looks okay, it feels much better already. And most importantly, don't forget to put some oil into the steam chest before you run the engine to oil the cylinder and the valve. I'm also putting a bit of oil, probably too much, on the valve rod. I should have done this when I oiled the piston rod. But anyway, it's done now, and the engine is ready to run. All I need is some compressed air. On the first run, it's a good idea to keep the air pressure low just to make sure everything's okay, and in this case, it is. Now I've turned the pressure up to about 30 pounds per square inch. Well, that runs very sweetly. The only thing I can fault it on is a bit of a leak around the steam chest, which is easily rectified by a gasket. First of all though, I'll try tightening up the nuts on the steam chest, being very careful not to shear them off. Yes, this is running very smoothly. There's a tiny bit of run out on the flywheel, but it's very little and nothing to worry about. I've found with flywheel run out that a lot of the time it's because the hole in the flywheel is slightly too big, and once the pinch bolt holds the flywheel in place on the crankshaft, it moves it over to one side slightly. But on this engine, it's so little, it's hardly worth the trouble removing the flywheel and trying to reseat it in a different position. This engine will be for sale on my website very shortly. I'm just fitting a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut to the steam inlet. Now it's time to look at the other S50. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove the cladding from the steam cylinder. And when I do that, I can't help noticing that there's a part of a fitting broken off in the exhaust port. And here's our remove fittings like this. You need to find a screwdriver that's just a little bit too big for the hole, tap it into position, and then simply unscrew it. And by tap it, I don't mean use a big hammer. I use the edge of a pair of pliers. And here is the broken part in my hand. Now you see it, now you don't. In exactly the same way as I've just shown with the other engine, I made an inlet adapter to fit the steam chest cover. Quarter by 32 on the inside and quarter by 40 on the outside. And here's the oiling process again. First of all, I put some oil into the steam chest. Now I'm doing the crosshead guides. Once again, I cannot stress how important it is to oil an engine before running it. And there's no special technique, just oil every part that moves. And any part that isn't oiled will wear quickly. And don't forget the main bearings and the eccentric and the big end. Rotating the engine by hand, it feels a lot better than it did before it was oiled. Now it's the air pressure test. This is the second part of the air test. On the first one I put a very small amount of pressure in. The engine runs fine but the cylinder's loose. This is very common with S50 steam engines. The cylinder's held to the bed plate using three small bolts. And one of them's missing, and the others aren't tight. So I'm going to take out the left hand one to see how long it is, and see if I can match it up with one out of my small pot of bolts. 
and now know the size, I'm refitting the original bolt so I don't lose it. In my box of small 7BA bolts, I didn't have any slot headed ones, so I used a bolt with a hexagon head. Now the engine doesn't run quite as well as it did because the cylinder is tight to the bed plate. Whenever you disturb a steam engine, you will find that things like this happen, but after a while, it starts to pick up and runs well again. The valve timing is out on this engine, and I can see why. The slot headed grub screw has broken off, so using a pair of pliers to loosen it, I carefully remove the remains of the grub screw using a very small screwdriver. I don't like slot headed grub screws in any shape, way, or form because I find they break very frequently. And now, to take oneself to the edge of insanity, it's time to set the timing. Here's the 7BA grub screw that I've fitted instead of the broken one. So now I can easily adjust the position of the eccentric relative to the crankshaft. So why is timing so important? As you can see, it runs. It's important with a steam engine to make sure that the steam is admitted early to cushion the moving parts. What I've just done is rotated the engine manually with some compressed air fed into it, and this told me that the steam was being admitted, or the compressed air in this case, too late in the stroke. That's slightly better, I'll just check it again. It's very important to use low pressure air for this job, particularly on a bigger engine. This one would give you a nasty nip, enough to cut your finger, but a larger model steam engine could do serious damage to your hand. Well, it's getting better. It's running in harmony with itself a little bit more. But I think it's still a little bit retarded. Yes, it's coming in there, just after top dead centre. So I adjusted the eccentric one more time. I'm only moving the eccentric a very small amount, and as you can see, it's still admitting the compressed air slightly late. With my hands feverishly twitching, I reach out once again for the Allen key. I'm only moving the eccentric a very, very tiny amount each time. It doesn't take much. Just watch how little I move it. You can't see it too clearly because I'm moving it such a small amount. I moved it possibly a 64th of an inch. It's a very fine adjustment. What's happening is the eccentric moves the valve over the valve ports and providing that the slide valve is in the middle, as it is on this engine, you're able to advance or retard the position where the valve opens and closes just by moving the eccentric. I think that's the position. To stop me from going completely insane by adjusting the eccentric over and over again, I took a break away from it and went into the outer part of the workshop to paint the cylinder cladding. And here, now it's dried, I'm refitting it to the cylinder. After securing the cladding, I fitted an exhaust elbow in place using some Loctite 542. And to finish the job, I fitted a new grub screw to the flywheel to replace the large 4BA bolt that was originally in there. And that's it for this one. Both of the S50s are okay now. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.